on behalf of Cricket West Indies and the West Indies senior men's team, I would like to say welcome to all of the journalists that have taken the time out to be here today with us. As we promised, we do have the new head coach of the West Indies white ball setup here to speak with us. That is Darren Sammy. And Darren is quite eager to get into his first press conference as head coach and begin answering you guys' questions. Um, so as I said, I won't hold us up too much. The first raised hand that I'm seeing is from Junior Codlin. And Junior, I'm going to ask you to please proceed with your question. Good evening, um, head coach Darren Sami. Good evening. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you, man. And you're looking very pleased to be sitting in the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, that's what my demeanor gives out. Well, I'll take that. Careful. But um, Sammy, when, when you took over as West Indies captain some years ago, you came in a climate which was not really welcome, but we have seen you grow in the job and took us to two World Cups. And a bit of that climate is around. So. Do we about to see history repeat itself? <laughs> well, what I could tell you, um, I approached this role the same way um, like I did back in 2010 when I was when I took on the captaincy role. First thing I do I did was to sit down and well not sit down but went on my knees and and start praying for the divine intervention, you know, the, 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 the wisdom needed uh, for this role, the patience needed and the, and the vision uh, to achieve the things that, um, you know, that would make the fans and, 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 and those who follow us um, proud of. Um, I understand the, the challenges um, that comes with the role, but in doing so, it's not one that fears me. You know, I'm quite excited about the challenges because of what I see we have and understanding the, the task at hand. I think that's, that's, that's the most important thing to me. And it's not just in cricket, in just how I lead. Once I understand what the job requires, then I now could focus on the things that I have to do and block out the noise. Because I've, I've had to do that throughout my career, block out the noise. But yes, um, I see similar pattern, but one that I think I'm even more prepared for. Wonderful. And I'm sure you're going to draw inspiration from Brandon McCollum and what he had to achieve. Yes, you know, Brendan, like, uh, he's one I've, I've, I've followed um, quite closely. Uh, what he's doing um, in England, you know, putting a stamp. Um, but you have to understand a lot of things went into, into him being there. You know, you have two like-minded individuals um, at the helm of um, England's red ball. Um, ben Stokes as the captain you know, sync with, with Brendan McCollum as a leader. So then it, it took the team to buy into the vision. So in, in, all, estab in, in all establishments and organizations and teams, um, once you're dealing with a group of people, it's not just one piece of the puzzle. You know, you have to fit in everything around uh, to, make it, to make it work. And, and that's, you know, speaking with the, the, the two captains, um, Shea and, and, and Powell, you know, we both, we all, we, 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 we all share the same vision. Um, you know, the chairman of selectors, the vision of the board, you know, all these things must be in line. And then we start putting out the plans um, in working forward to, to making those, taking those top small steps um, in the right direction. Sammy, we appreciate you for taking on the job, man. And I certainly <laughs> wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Junior.
Um, I am seeing a question from Joel in the chat in terms of the technical staff and what that will look like. Um, however, Joel, that information has not been um, sent out to the public as yet. So you'll see something Thank like you, that Joel. shortly. Thank I'm you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for taking that on. <laughs> Brandon Collett, um, please proceed with your questions. Hi there, Coach. Um, good, good day to you. Um, good. Good Evan day, Lewis. Mm -hmm. Evan Lewis and Shimron Hetmeyer, they've been out of West Indies cricket of recent times. From a coach's perspective, how important are those guys, you know, to be back in West Indies cricket? And what are some of the efforts you would make as head coach to get them back into West Indies cricket? Uh, first thing I would like to make it known, um, everyone who plays regional cricket is available or is indicating that they're available for West Indies. Um, selection. I've had conversations with both said gentlemen, Hetty and Admire and, and Evan Lewis. You know, just, you know, having played not too long ago and understanding the complaints of, of players and the lack there, therein of, of, of the communication, um, I think it's important. Um, for us to communicate. Uh, it sounds simple, but I understand that just a clear communication, you know, makes the process better and it gives you a better understanding. So yes, I've had um, in-depth conversation with, with, with Shimron and Evan Lewis about the mindset, you know, the plans, um, where they see West Indies cricket with, with, in align with, with, with themselves. And I must tell you, the, the feedback has been positive. Also, also guys like, you know, Andrew Russell's, I've reached out to other guys like Sunil Narayan and all these guys to, to hear what are their thoughts, you know, because they still take part in our, in some of our domestic competition, you know, so, but it takes honest, mature conversations, which is one I'm not afraid to have with, 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 with the players. Um, and um, that's the position on, on that. I, I, I am encouraged by the discussions that we've, we've had when it comes to, to West Indies um, cricket and, um, you know, outlining clear plans as to how we integrate. Because, you know, the, the, these players, you know, you look at the caliber of, of, of Shinran, I'm, I'm sure it hurts the fans to see him, you know, performing elsewhere and, and, and not in the maroon. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Gerard Morris Seeley from Sportsmax, who will be followed by Jerome Foster. Please proceed and let the other guys. Thank you, Dario. Uh, good morning, Darian, and congratulations on being named by my head coach. Thank you very much, sir. And my first question to you, uh, what kind of conversations have you been having with Shea Hope? as he's the leader of this team. Of course, you know, you just mentioned Brandon McCollum, Brandon McCollum and Ben Stowe's having that cohesiveness as a unit um, of leaders. What kind of conversations have you been having with Shea thus far after being assumed in your new position? Yeah, well, you know, the, the basic stuff about, you know, the identity of, of our game, you know, what, what identity we, have, we want to give to our, our cricket. Um, Claire, you know, from him taking over, him being probably the leading batter for our group now as captain, what is what is experience in the dressing room? Um, some of the things where, you know, we could improve him being in the system, just getting to know um, how he thinks, you know, one, one of the things we both clear on uh, and from speaking to him, getting to know him more, I understand his mindset. And one of the things we quite clear on is, is just having this positive mindset around in, in, in the dressing room, you know, making sure that role definition is, 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 is quite clear, you know, with, with the players. So with that comes, you know, accountability. Um, it, 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 it gives you, um, it, it, it gives you that, that sense of where we're heading with, with clear roles uh, for different players. And she wants, we both want to take on the game, you know, um, once we've identified what it takes to be an elite team, um, matching that with the personnel that uh, could 
go out and, and, and execute those 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 roles mm -hmm. you know and small targets um for as a team you know all these things we've, we've discussed and i found that we are quite uh like-minded in in the way we want to take this this game forward and um yeah, it's it's again. That's why I could sit down here and tell you guys that I'm quite excited about about the journey because of, of first of all the leaders, the leadership group. Uh, we have a team that has had about what, four four five captains in there, and the leadership group is is, is strong. It's about galvanizing everybody in one direction, uh, and with clear understanding of what's needed or it's what required to do. We're heading in the right direction. Uh, thank you, Darren. Um, one more question for you. Mm -hmm. We know that it's going to be a difficult task uh, playing at the World Cup qualifiers because every team that goes there will want to get one of those spots uh, mm -hmm. at the World Cup. Are you going to take a more strategic style of coaching to ensure that we come with a game plan to, to win every single game? Of course, we'll be playing against different teams, so we will have to have different strategies to play against those teams. Or... Are you more focused on motivating the, play, motivating the players to put out the best performance that they can um, each time they step out onto the field? I think coaching without a strategic plan is, 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 is craziness. And also coaching without being able to motivate is also craziness. You know, so it, they both goes, goes hand in hand. You know, I think we, will, we have to emphasis, emphasize on, uh, on our preparation, you know, um, in whatever you do, being, being actually prepared gives you the best chance of performing. Um, if you know where you go in, where you head into, how you want to play your position, you study it. Now, um, we have all of that at our disposal. Um, sitting down, planning the cricket and committing, committing to the, to the things that we say we're gonna do and how we're gonna go out and, and play match against the the opposition um and strategies strategic planning is is crucial um and me as a as a motivator is also crucial in you know building confidence and and inspiring in, in instilling belief in in the plans that we have so that it could go out we could go out and execute it yeah thank you and all the best in uae and other qualifiers thank you thank you mrs Simi. Yeah, Coach, morning, Jerome here from Radio Jamaican Television. Morning, Jamaica. morning, Jerome. What's up? I'm good, man. Um, first question, in terms of what the type of cricket that you want to play, um, based on background or from the outside before stepping into the job, the white ball team, especially the ODI team, has been struggling. Mm -hmm. Posit saying that you want to play positive cricket is easy, but what exactly do you want to do? Yeah, look... I, I, I watched, I saw something started in, in South Africa uh, recently on the coach Coley and, and the two new captains. I saw a level of, of purpose, um, purposeful um, cricket. I saw um, clearly there was a, a game plan. Um, and again, um, with conversation with, 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 the, with the two captains, um, it first starts by players understanding where we are as a team. My job is to, my mission is to like create an elite performing West Indies team. How are we gonna do that? We first have to understand where we at as a team. West Indies here, what it takes to be an elite performing team in the world. Clearly there's something an elite performing team is doing. So building a, a West Indies Elite 11, not in terms of personnel, but in terms of roles. Once you've identified that, and with clear communication, clear planning, this is what this role requires. Openers, middle order batsmen, bowlers. This is what the best in the world are doing at that position. Once we understand where we are, now we start strategizing and planning from the practice, from the training, you know, if we have to get better with our skills, um, start implementing those, those habits. And also understanding the different situations of the game, what is needed. 
you know so yes it's having a positive mindset um she is big big on you know the mindset of the players but also understanding the job at hand and what it requires and um yeah we are already starting the process um of of just simplifying things and me being the sponge when it comes to all the data that we have collected that will help us win and presented it uh, in a way that is understandable and effective in, in, in the dressing room so that we, when we step out, there's true commitment to the way we say we're going to play. Um, the, my final participation here, two-part question. One, um, you being appointed without a lot of coaching experience, I guess you would have heard the talk. Um, your reaction to that are not having a certain level of qualification like some other teams. And the second hmm. part, you not having a role in the selection of the team that you're taking to both UAE and Zimbabwe. Um, yeah. I mean, the team was selected before I was appointed as, as head coach. So that we, we, we couldn't avoid. Um, but that doesn't stop me from going down there and you know working with, with a West in this cricket team. Um, the other one, um, like I've, I've made it known, you know, coaching was was not something I aspired to do um, during my playing days, but it's a role that actually chose me, <laughs> if you understand what I mean, by the way I played the level of experience. And I'm, I'm a work in progress. <laughs> I will not sit down here and tell you, okay, no, I am aware of all those things. I, I understand the challenges ahead of me, but I also believe that the impact and the effect that I could have in this generation right now, and I will not let because I don't have a, a certificate stop me from you know, taking on the challenges that I know that I'm equipped to, to handle. Um, I will tell you, I am, I've already started the process in being certified. Um, and also uh, during that process, you know, working with, with the West in this team, working with, with, with further developing myself as a coach um, in terms of the qualifications needed. But don't think for one minute I will ever question myself that I'm not fit to do, to do that job or this role that I'm in. All right, thank you, coach. Yeah. No problem. All right. Um, I did actually promise the head coach that we would spend about 20 minutes on this press conference, but um, it seems as though um, the engagement is quite high. And I'm Dario, sorry. you know I'm not a, I'm not a man of the public. <laughs> so I know that he would be friends, to my friends. as well. <laughs> my friends. <laughs> so we're going to go to Jelani Beckles, and Jelani will be followed by Adriel, and then Akim Green. Thank you. Thank you, Dario. I... Hi, Dr. Jalani here. Hey, Jalani, what's up, man? Yeah, good, man. Good, good. Um, Sami, you mentioned earlier that you have to block out the noise and so on. I know you have been, you have had your ups and downs with the TNT, with the Cricket West Indies and so on. There's, it's no secret. Has those sort of situations made you stronger and ready for, for this sort of massive job you're taking on, being West Indies coach? Of, of course, you know, different experiences um, as a human being, if you don't learn and, and, and gather uh, knowledge to get better and improve your life for, for, for the future, you know, um, I mean, you are sure that you've not, not done any learning. But I mean, if I look at my journey <laughs> to, to being here, you know, um, no one thought I would play over 100 ODIs. You know, no one thought like I would play test cricket or, or, or even captain the West Indies. You know, life is about you know, breaking barriers, you know, believing in yourself, trusting in the processes that, that, that could lead to success. And my strongest asset is the willpower that I have and the belief, you know, um, and I don't, see, I don't see challenges as fears. I see challenges as a way to to inspire and 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 um, become better. Um, and yeah, if I fail at it, 
I'm a better person to be, to be successful when I do it another time around. So that's my mindset. I've always been a positive thinker. I've always, you will, <laughs> I said something in 2012. I said, man, no, Jesus Christ walked this earth and did nothing wrong. And people crucify him. So I don't, once again, once I understand what's required, and I know I'm doing everything in my power to do what's required, that's all that matters to me. You know, journalists are paid to write, reporters are paid to ask questions and write, and I'm paid to try and bring results to, to West in this cricket. And I'm, 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 vow, I'm vouching now that I will do it to the best of my ability. I will not leave until the results will, 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 will take care of itself. But I believe that I could have an impact with the men I surround myself with and the team that I have now with the two captains. I believe I could go out there and, and, and get the job done. That will start moving the needle in, in the right direction. Thank you, Sammy. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Thank you, Jen. Woody, or Art Darren, just want to ask, um, Lisa, if you could just turn off your mic because we're getting a lot of artifacts. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Um, yes, Darren, um, your, what, is, what is your, you haven't had a lot of formal coaching um, in, in the past, but what mm -hmm. is your, what, what would you say is your coaching style? Are you a hands on, are you going to be a, a hands on coach? Or are you going to be a coach who would be more overseer, leave, leave it to your um, assistants to do the day to day work, but you be more of a motivator? Um, do you believe in the captain taking the lead and you um, following up behind him? Or do you believe that you take the lead and the captain follows in your stream? What is your coaching style? No, look, it's, it's my coaching style is similar to my leadership style, my captaincy style. Um, the first thing I said when I spoke to, to all my staff, I said, when we pack our bags, just leave, leave the ego at home. Whatever, you could pack everything else, leave the ego at home. And that's how I've lived my life. You know, yes, I'm the head coach, but it takes, it takes a team effort in order to move things forward, you know. I believe that myself and the captain must, you know, you know, be in sync with, with the way we want to play. Um, also the, the selection panel, you know, um, everybody must understand what the plans and the vision is for, for the team. And all of us, it will take all of us to make it happen. On the ground, I have to be part of the, <laughs> Of the, of the system of the processes, I will not I will not be true to myself if I said, "Hey, you take on this." No, I will. I have the head coach name by um, role by my name, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna designate. I've never been that type of leader, you know. I've always incorporate everyone into the work and the job that that has to be done, you know, and. That's why it's a team. It's not, it's not tennis, it's not golf. It's a cricket match, which requires preparation where myself and, and my staff, you know, responsible for preparing, giving the team to the captain where he now on the field that I, he knows I trust his judgment that what we've planned and what we've discussed, um, he's out there to now inspire his players to execute these things. So they have different stages where I'll have to take lead, where the captain have to take lead, where my coaching staff, my um, assistant coach will have to take lead. It's, it's, it's a full circle, Woody, and that's, that's how I've always operated in all the teams that I've, I've done. The ability to make everybody feel as important as the head coach or, or the massage therapist. That's how you build strong culture and strong values and, and try to inspire performances. Any, any of your past coaches you may have consulted, um, you know, at the international level, you know, I think you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> of course, um, what actually, for someone who've not, who did not have the, 
the desire to, to go into coaching. Now that I'm here, I, I see that the amount of coaches I've worked through throughout my career, whether it be for franchise cricket, um, with the West Indies team or different teams I've played, I've gathered so much knowledge, the good things they do that I see I, I could implement um, for myself. And yeah, I mean, Otis Gibson and I, we, 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 we're quite close. I know you're talking about him. We're quite close. We've always been in contact from way before he came into the setup. And um, he was one that player coach when it was, we had a very, very good relationship in terms of planning the cricket and how we presented to the guys, you know. Um, but I also work with, with Phil, you know, we won a championship together so everybody have their own styles and now it's for me all what I've gathered the experience I've gathered over the years working with different people and now putting all this into into my style and my way but my way is not the highway <laughs> you know what I mean it's it's incorporating everybody to pull in one direction trying to get results for for, for our team and you know, trying to inspire the next generation of cricketers and fans. And just the last quick one, um, your assessment of where the team is at right now, I mean, you're, you're, you're about to go off to the UAE, then the World Cup qualifiers, just your assessment of where the team, the group of players, West Indies cricket, what was your assessment as you take on this challenge? I do know numbers don't lie. We are at number nine and number eight, respectively. We're there for a reason. We've not been consistent enough. But then when I look at the data ahead of me, you know, um, what we've done in the last five years, what we've done in the last few years, where we've been losing games, different stages. Man, we're not far off, if you understand. And, and that's an excitement. When I, when I say I'm trying to build an elite team and I look at what openers are doing in the world versus what we are doing, we're not far off. Different stages of the game where, you know, spin is killing us um, between overs number 16, um, 11 to 40, you know, areas we could improve. So yes, we're number nine and eight, but when I look at the one percenters, if we could improve on certain areas and just be more aware of the situation, probably a different mindset, a better skills, better execution, we're not far off, you know, and um, if we could build on these things and, 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 and improve that, the small goals that I have for, for the team, uh, you know, every period, like we want to start improving on our rankings, you know, by the time the year ends, we want to finish uh, in the top eight, you know, next year, you know, start taking these little steps. We really not far off. It's just that certain areas of certain times of the game we are losing, you know, in that period. And once we keep losing the fight in that period, it puts pressure lower down the further the game goes. Whereas other teams are are really strong in in, in that period, which then puts pressure on the opposition. So I've understand the data. I've understood, and again, it's having honest conversations about where we are and now it's starting to take the, 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 the action um, required to change our mindset and change the way we approach the game during that, that period. And, you know, Shea and Rothman and, you know, all the, all, all the other guys, we, we will try to, to, you know, incorporate that in, in the way we play. Best wishes to you, mate. Thank you very much, Rudy, man, and same to you. Yes, we are limited to a 40-minute time span. I do see a few more raised hands. So, Akeem Green, you're going to be followed by Bradley Jacks, and hopefully we'll be able to get in Reza as well um, before our six and a half minutes elapsed. Uh, just for clarity and clarification, uh, Sammy, at this point, you don't have the, the level one certificate, is it? But you're going to be working towards, you know, getting those certificates. I, no, just want to I did... I did a level level two certificate a long time ago. I was an MCC young cricketer. Right. Oh, let's go oh, up to level two. All right, thanks. That's, that's, there were some misconceptions about so that's why I clarify that. Listen, like I said, journalists got to pay, got paid to talk and write. You know, not everything you hear is, is correct. I've done I've done this 
part of my MCC being on MCC Young Cricketer staff was, you know, that was mandatory to do level one and, you know, level two and all these first skip courses and stuff like that. Didn't know back then that, you know, because again, like I said, I had no intentions of venturing into coaching. But look, in, in all walks of life, there's practical and there's theory. Do I believe, you know, going through a, what I'm about to go through in terms of further developing myself as a coach in terms of the theory behind it? Yes, I believe that. But do I also believe my experience and and, and the, practice, the practical aspect of actually knowing the game, playing the game, understanding, you know, what it takes to win? Do I need that as a coach? You bet I do. You know what I mean? So there's pros and cons. And again, it's okay to have an opinion and rightly so, but not for one, I will let, I will question my, my position because of opinions of, of, of others. I've never been like that. If not, I would not be where I am today. You know, I'd lay down and, and die and, and surrender. That's not Darren Semi. That's not what runs through my blood. All right, thanks for that clarification, Sammy. And just one quick thing. I know you have mentioned earlier about Evan and you respond to the question about Evan and Chairman, but from the outside looking in, are there any other players that you hope in the future you can get into this setup so that you know you can get all your their, their T's and I's in order in terms of how you want the team to go forward? I don't think it's me getting players in. You know, I don't think I could get players in. You know, performances and, and those sort of things get players in. What I could create is a clear communication as to, you know, players being available. You know, what it takes to play for West Indies. Well, you know, you know, having conversations about you know, our Caribbean Premier League, our first class cricket, our, our um, Super 50, you know, player availability, okay. You know, so conversations I will have, like, you know, the, we live in a T20 franchise era. Okay, so I'll have a conversation with Shimron. Hey, Shimron, this is what, what we, we're doing for the year. You know, um, what are your plans? Okay, coach, I'm available to play white ball cricket for West Indies, but I would like to play IPL or, you know, we, we all available during CPL or IPL and two other leagues. Then I would, then that's information that I have. Okay, well, Hetty, you know what? We have five or six series before the World Cup here. We need you to play in four of them, blah, blah, blah. You know, just constant dialogue that is not, uh, you, if you don't do this, you. I don't, I don't think I have a right to write off anyone from playing for, for West Indies. I don't think that's part of my contract. Availability, performance, you know, um, dictate that. My job is to help you understand your roles and show you a vision as to what it takes in that position that I'm, I'm selecting you in. But I'm not in a position, nor, nor should anyone not, not a selector, not, not, a, not a, a coach, not to dictate, you know, this guy career is over. I don't believe in that. Performances and availability dictates that. I'm going to ask you to proceed with your first question quickly. I'll try, to, I'll, have one. I'll try to be as quick as possible. Um, good morning, coach. First of all, congratulations. Thanks, Bradley. Uh, something that a trend that I've noticed in cricket teams around the world nowadays is that they have specialists for different conditions. I would like to know if that is going to be the case for the West Indies team going forward in the OJ and T20 format. We will, we will try. We will try to, to, to select the best available person for the roles. We, will, we have to take in consideration, you know, the different places that we play. For example, if we are going to Australia and we know the data tells you left arm spinner, I'm just speaking, giving you an example. If the data shows left arm spin is quite 
you know, Australians are left are vulnerable to left arm spin. Why wouldn't we go down there with one or two left arm spinners? Even if, you know, an off spinner is, is doing well, if you understand the point I'm trying to make. So yes, you have to take in consideration the surface, the opposition, you know, when you select teams. And that comes with strategic planning. You know, knowing that in, in four months time, we will be in Australia. So now you start formulating and, and planning. And again, having clear communication to see who will be affected, even if they've been performing. If you understand what I mean. So I could go to Alzari Joseph and say, hey, we need you fresh and ready for Australia on these bouncy tracks. Maybe you, we, you could take a rest at, at, in this series. And again, it, it takes... Coach, I don't want to cut you. Seconds. 